Hey, what's up? This is Scott, and welcome back to What Is Wednesday. We had a, a brief little downtime here where we were getting uh, some things taken care of, but we are back with our weekly What Is Wednesday videos where we're going to be breaking down web development topics into uh, plain English and just explaining what the heck various things are, whether it's APIs, frameworks, libraries, SaaS services, or I guess that's redundant, uh, SaaS companies, those types of things. And in this video, what we're going to be talking about is Supabase. Now, Supabase is uh, a, basically, it's a backend for data is the easiest way to describe that. It's also open source and it uses Postgres as its database. So this basically gives you an option as a place to store your data in a Postgres database without having to really get into the specifics of Postgres itself. It also has support and built-in features for authentication as well as things like subscriptions with real time um, and instant API. So basically what you're doing is you're spinning up a super base, uh, su super base, and you're creating your data structures, and then you're able to access this as an API with minimal effort. So as you can see here, Supabase is uh, open source, so you can host it yourself, which is a really big pro of that. In fact, they compare it a lot to Firebase, so much to the point where they say it's an open source Firebase alternative. Now, that obviously doesn't help if you've never used Firebase, but basically what it is, it's a database for your data. You can use it for authentication. You can store large files, including media, and you have edge functions. Now, there's a ton of stuff here, and you get an instant API exactly from this. Basically, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of the back end coding of things. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like in the real back end of this. In fact, I have an account. I'm going to authorize. Okay, it's logged in here. Now, Supabase is a newer service, but it's really fantastic. Oh, look at that green highlight. Okay, so let's restore my test project, which is paused. And you can see if I open up this project here, what kinds of stuff do we get? Well, let's just let it load up. Again, I'm not paying for this account. This is just a, a free sort of basic account. And you can see it's still setting up my project. It's provisioning because I had it paused. And now I'm just going to wait for this to finish setting up, and then we can take a look at what exists here. OK, so our new project has been provisioned. You can see that there is a table editor for this where you can uh, create database tables, right? Maybe I have an ID that's an int eight and I have a created at timestamp. You know, you got to love that they add some of these things for you. You can even set the ID by default here as a primary key. We can just call this a test table. I'm just going to hit save just so you can see how quick and easy this is. And this is adding two columns uh, to test table. Let's confirm this. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't mean to confirm that, but looks like it created for us anyways. So we have our table. We can insert a row. The ID will be automatically generated. It's created at right now. And now we have a uh, an item in our database table. And just like that, we should be able to be able to query this API and get access to this record here, of course. Um, it's, it's not like anything not anything that crazy, but it's it's pretty neat. Um, you also have things like users and policies, um, SMS stuff, which I haven't really dove into. You have storage for buckets for actual um, media, things like that. You have some scripts that you can have here. Uh, and this is actually really pretty neat, quick scripts to run on your database that they just give you. Uh, the database itself, including your various tables and API logs, roles, backups, all the kind of stuff you'd want if you were storing data from somewhere. There's also edge functions, which are, are still experimental. You can see they're experimental until August 1st, 20 or 2022. Okay. We also have logs, which are great reports, which are great. We have our API that it's created for us. And this will tell you a little bit about the API. Now, what's interesting a little bit about this is that it has a really nice documentation for this, right? Basically consisting of telling you where your API URL is and how you can utilize node as a library to access this. Now, this is all I'm going to say essentially for the Supabase preview here. What is Supabase? It's a way to store your data. It's a way to create an API and a service and have it hosted somewhere. You can have the paid version, which is on their website. It's open source. You can host it yourself. Uh, there's a lot of really great stuff here, and they have some examples here. You know me, I love a good Svelte app, so you can use a Svelte command board 
Kanban board for that kind of thing. So check it out. This is Super Base. Let me know what you think about it. I think it's pretty neat. If you want to learn Super Base, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. We have a course from John Myers on a real time remix with Super Base, and it uses Remix, which is already one of the hottest frameworks out there. It's so cool. And Super Base together to do a real time chat app. How cool is that? So check it out if you're interested in learning Super Base. There will also be more Super Base content coming with Svelte. We'll be building a full stack app once Svelte Kit hits version 1.0. So keep your eyes open for that. Sign up for Level Up Tutorials at leveluptutorials.com for the year, and you'll save 25% if you sign up for the year. So check it out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on Friday for Weekly Svelte.